Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Thank you for staying tuned to Ikim FM. And this week we are with me, Mazlina Ismail, in Shaping Tomorrow. Alhamdulillah, we've now come to uh, its eighth episode on our topic, Unlocking Human Potential, with our guest, Mr. Syed Muhyiddin Alatas. Assalamualaikum, Mr. Syed. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, DJ Mazlina. Alhamdulillah, how are you? Uh, very well, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we have actually now come to the final episode on this topic, Unlocking Human Potential. Let me recap in last week's session where uh, you and Mr. Shafiq discussed, um, and even in many of the previous episodes as well, that one of the functions of the university in Muslim societies is the education of the community. Uh, can you elaborate further on this point and highlight examples from any Muslim communities perhaps? Yes, uh, to answer that question, uh, I just recap that um, the example of the university which I highlighted the last time was that of the Nizamiya, uh, founded by Nizam al-Mulk. And the personality involved was uh, none other than Imam al-Ghazali. Mm -hmm. And the, the impact, the direct impact as can be gleaned from the work of uh, al-Kailani, uh, Majid Kailani on the generation of Salahuddin al Ayyubi mm -hmm. was that uh, Imam al Ghazali's educational uh, movement, shall we say, is beginning with his writing of the Ihya Ulumuddin yeah. and uh, the, the resolution of the, uh, shall we say, the, the, the gap between the, 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 the people of Tasawuf and the people of Hadith and the people of uh, Fiqh, yeah. binding them together within his Ihya. The, the, the resultant of the project was first the, shall we say, the generation of the teachers of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jailani mm -hmm. and then from the uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jailani it got to the teachers of Sheikh Salahuddin Al, -Ay uh, of, uh, Salahuddin Al Ayyubi yeah. uh, who eventually uh, reopened uh, the, 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 the city of Baitul Maqdis um, but uh, uh, this is just one of the many other examples we have also in, in one of the weeks discussed the role of the, the education system in the Malay world okay. how it was centered around the, the individual scholars yeah. uh, and also uh, last week when we were discussing the, the, the meaning of the university we were saying that in, in Islam at least um, when we speak about the university the meaning that we have in mind is the Al-Kuliyah uh, in the sense that it is meant to create the uh, to, to produce the, the universal man mm -hmm. after the model of the, the perfect universal man i.e. the Prophet Muhammad so, so, so. Yes. so therefore uh, in Islam in reality there is no shall we say dichotomy between informal non-formal and formal education they all have the same goal and earlier on, as we, in one of the early episodes, we even discussed how the, the earliest madrasas set up was, was set up during the lifetime of the Prophet, mm -hmm. in particular the, 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 the city of Medina, yeah. and the Muhajirin and the Ansar and so on. Yes. So, uh, right now, or today, I wish to, to, to deliberate further about how uh, this role of, of education in Islam uh, is not, uh, it's not just you know, introducing a university uh, independent of the Community, that, but the, the the community of Muslims uh, will somehow, due to the introduction of this educational institution, uh, in as a whole, uh, receive the benefits from it. What I have in mind yeah. is, uh, of course, other than the city of Medina, Basra. Uh, Rai, yeah, the city of Arazi, and all these other cities, yeah. uh, is perhaps the city of um, Tarim, uh, Hadramur in Yemen. Mm -hmm. uh, why I have uh, chosen this example yeah. is because uh, it serves as a as a beautiful laboratory to demonstrate mm -hmm. how an entire city can enact the tadib process or the, the the education process in Islam. We know, for example, that uh, in its earliest history, or rather in its early history uh, after Islam, that as early as the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, mm -hmm. when Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq became Khalifa, uh, amongst the first people to have given bay'ah uh, to Sayyidina Abu Bakr through an envoy were the Yemenis, or yes. the, the people on, in, in Tarim Hadramut. Okay. And as a result, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, uh, he made a special dua for them that is still told to us today if, if you visit uh, that city 
Hadra Moon mm-hmm. wherein the, the, he said uh, for three things he asked for the city of Tarim for, yeah. for Hadra Moon first he prayed that uh, within the city will be produced many scholars and many saints of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm-hmm. yes, awliya and ulama yeah. secondly he asked that the uh, that the land be protected from fitnah mm-hmm. and then thirdly that he asked for abundance of water mm-hmm. uh, and earlier on also we know that uh, the, the Prophet Muhammad he, himself have described the people of Yemen he, by, by this famous statement wherein he said Al-Hikmah Yamaniya Wal Iman Yamaniya uh, Faith is Yemeni in character and uh, wisdom is Yemeni in character mm-hmm. they have come a people to you and they are of the softest of hearts and these are the people of Yemen but uh, it's true significance as a city as a, as a, as a community in which uh, Ta'dib is enacted I suppose must have come in history as a result of the coming of the great descendant of the Prophet himself okay. uh, Sayyidina Ahmad ibn Isa the, the emigrant yeah, Ahmad ibn Isa al-Muhajir mm-hmm. who was just a few generations away from the Prophet Muhammad and he decided to move uh, to, to Hadramaut uh, as a result of him wanting to, to, to save his descendants and mm-hmm. his posterity. He brought together with him his whole his whole Kabila, yes, mm-hmm. uh, to the city of uh, Hadramaut uh, with, uh, with the idea of Allah's pleasure in his mind. And within a few generations, uh, their efforts, uh, in particular through the, the, the leadership of one of his descendants, Al-Faqih Al-Muqaddam Muhammad bin Ali Ba'alawi, the way of the Ba'alawi or the way of the descendants of Sayyidina Ali who live in the city became formalized. And uh, they were already in their own, uh, shall we say, character and personalities, this line of the descendants of the Prophet from Sayyidina Hussein. Mm-hmm. They were all teachers. They were all uh, masters of the sciences of fiqh, the sciences of aqidah, in particular the one that I mentioned here, Al-Faqih Al-Muqaddam, is the one who is known uh, the foremost uh, in, in discernment. Uh, he formulated what was regarded or what is today regarded as the way of the Ba'alawis. Okay. Uh, the way of the Ba'alawi or the tariqah of the Ba'alawi basically a means through which one achieves um, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm-hmm. is formulated by Imam Haddad according to five principles the first principle is the principle principle of al-ilm which is knowledge okay. uh, the knowledge of the sharia in, uh, in specific um, basically uh, the knowledge uh, that is deri- uh, derived from the Quran the sunnah and the tradition, mm-hmm. uh, meaning to say the, the ijma of the sahaba as well as the, the schools of, of the madhahib. Secondly, uh, after the, 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 the successful acquisition of knowledge, the second principle is the principle of amal. Okay. Because knowledge alone, without amal, according to Imam al-Ghazali, al-ilmu bila amalin junun is a, is a sort of craziness, insanity, mm-hmm. whereas uh, amal without knowledge lam yakun he said and, uh, amal without knowledge or practice without knowledge uh, will not uh, amount to anything mm. so the fact practice of the religion until you are uh, given uh, a, a special kind of knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this derives from the statement in the Quran where Allah says ittaqullah yu'allimukumullah yes have fear and, and, and taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God will teach you mm-hmm. and the hadith of the Prophet idha amila bima alima alam Allahu ma ilman ma lam ya'lam if a person practices what he knows Allah will teach him a knowledge in which he previously did not know. Mm-hmm. The third principle after this principle of ilm yeah. uh, or of amal is the principle of um, khawf, yes, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, uh, the descendants of the Prophet in the city, they, 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 they took to themselves to practice mm-hmm. this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inward practice, of course, but it has implications in the outward, which is the fourth principle, the principle of wara'. Uh, wara is somehow some, sometimes translated into English as, as scrupulousness mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the practice of uh, being always concerned about your your ultimate fate of in, in the akhirah that uh, your actions follow through uh, in the sense that you are always concerned about for example not to fall uh, into error mm-hmm. not to fall uh, for example sometimes they, they, they are overly concerned to the extent that they are even wary of the things which are halal mm-hmm. uh, to the extent that the, the nafs becomes habituated to it mm-hmm. that it may lead to that, that which is haram so basically they are uh, 
constantly watching over themselves. Okay. And then finally, the fifth uh, principle of the Ba'alawi is the, the principle of Al-Ikhlas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Al-Ikhlas is doing something for the, uh, solely for the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These five principles, as Imam Al-Haddad has formulated it, is only one of the the many uh, summaries and the summations of this uh, this uh, tariqa. Yeah. Uh, and remember, just to 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 relate back to the discussion that we began, uh, I wanted to show how a community can yeah. be run around the principles and 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 of that deep. Uh, Sometime around last year, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, just to give a personal uh, report on on this regard, um, I I was given the privilege to have visited uh, the city Tarim for the first time in okay. my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, but uh, what I want to point out is that I I, I managed to see this study in action through various institutions. Uh, one of it is that first uh, you see in the city a few um, institutions of higher learning. Uh, there is the Ribat Tarim, yes, established over the course of hundreds of years mm-hmm. and uh, and renewed recently by um, Habib Salim Ashatri and his elder brother, uh, the recent uh, passing, uh, who, who passed away recently, uh, Rahimahullah. And then there is the Darul Mustafa, headed by Habib Umar bin Hafiz. Yes. Uh, and there is also the University Al Ahkaf, which is academic, mm-hmm. uh, but its uh, Sharia uh, department is in Tarim, so that people, uh, the, the students who study at the faculty, can also benefit from these traditional centers of learning. Okay. There are, of course, various other uh, centers of learning in the Ribat form. This Ribat, uh, as as as, an, uh, as a as a means of of education or Tadim, is unique in the sense that it does not offer only, shall we say, scholastic learning. Okay. Students do not study at the Darul. Mustafa, for example, uh, solely uh, trying to memorize and master the mutun or the the, the, the text of the tradition, okay. but they are also uh, the 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 uh, Darul Mustafa, for example, combines between what is called ilm suluk wa da'wa. Meaning to say, all the students have to practice their religion okay. in the sense that not only are they to there to study through the special characteristic of Islamic institutions of learning, uh, they are also there to, uh, shall we say, uh, perform the inward. Tazkiyah uh, nafs, yes, mm-hmm. the Islamization of the self mm-hmm. uh, in in the form of uh, recitation of adkar, mm-hmm. having a personal relationship with the Quran, mm-hmm. and then finally there is da'wah, the, the the element of of disseminating of the knowledge, mm-hmm. and this of course the community benefits. Yeah. Now I I've only just just highlighted the role of the the, the institutions, mm-hmm. but once you see the the role of the institution within the community, therein you see um, the the significance of the statements of some of the previous uh, leaders of this community. They used to say that the streets of Tarim uh, is a sheikh to whomever does not possess a sheikh. And that is because the houses, the um, uh, the houses which are turned into places of uh, of learning, mm-hmm. turned into libraries. Uh, there are houses that are open for uh, for maulid for the recitation of uh, the ratib. Okay. Uh, these are all, all of course religious practices with strong educational uh, aspects, yes, or educational benefits. Uh, for example, when I went there, it was during the the, the month of Rabi' al uh, Awal, turning to Rabi'ul. Okay. What I noticed was that uh, in the, for example, in the whole month of yeah. Rabiul Awal, there are certain maulid, you need to see the, commemorati- uh, the commemoration of the birth of the Prophet, so that has been, uh, for example, institutionalized in, in that place yeah. for close to 80 years, some of them 100 years, in which they knew, uh, for example, that the second Thursday of the month, they will be at so and so masjid and so and so place. I see. And, and, and this, uh, for example, the commemoration community gathers around it as a yearly event. And during these yearly events, for example, during the Maulid at the Ribat Tarim, for example, you will find that the rector of the the, the, the Ribat mm-hmm. uh, will himself address the public. Okay. And this address, you know, will, will take around an hour. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, d- during the address, every aspect of the moral uh, the moral improvement of the community will be touched upon. Yes, the honor, uh, the, 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 the problem of raising children, uh, the, 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 the importance of doing business fairly, um, and, and, and to be calm in the state of tribulation mm-hmm. so this is how uh, this is how a, a, a community a city for example functions as, as a university city as a, a city of knowledge furthermore 
some of these programs, you know, the, the, the Maulid and the Hadra, some of these traditions that they have initiated, uh, that, that happens all year round and not, not simply, and not solely in, uh, in, in uh, the Rabi Ul Awal, yeah. uh, such that people in the community can enjoy the, the, the these gatherings mm. and, and benefit from the scholars. Yes. Their scholars are truly, shall we say, um, despite having their da'wah missions abroad, they do go, um, in various parts of the world calling people to Allah. Yeah. But in the, uh, but they are all local scholars mm-hmm. insofar as the people in the community can have access to them. Yes, despite the, uh, despite the ranks that they, 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 they attain to, yes, uh, a lot of them have rank, uh, attained to the rank of the mufti, uh, yes, and some of them the, attain the, the, the rank as, as the professor, the rector of, of a, a certain institution. But despite whatever ranks that they have attained to, mm-hmm. the common people can see mm-hmm. these, these scholars. These scholars would be not just uh, leading uh, majalis and leading ta- ta'lim sessions wherein they, they give knowledge. Um, for example, you can attend, you know, the public can attend some of these, these, these sessions, you know, uh, Tuesday night at a certain masjid, okay. a, a certain series of works are read. Mm-hmm. But you can come across them also, you know, visiting the sick. You will be able to see them uh, sending, uh, you know, the dead, the, the, the janazah yeah. to its burial. Mm-hmm. You will see them reciting uh, Quran upon the deceased, yeah. and and you you can you can join them in these gatherings. So the the, the, the entire city, in a sense, is is built on the principle of ihsan. Okay. Uh, another thing. I suppose that uh, that uh, is imposing. I suppose about the uh, the entire city as the city that reverberates with knowledge is the the very structures themselves. Okay. Uh, we know that any modern city. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's places of uh, a gathering. In in our times, uh, the the stadiums, the malls, okay. uh, they have come to replace uh, what was previously the the function of the religious uh, places of gatherings. Okay. Yes, you, we know that. For example, the most imposing structure mm-hmm. in uh, in you know cities in Europe as well as cities in the Muslim world they are no longer the masajid yeah. or no longer the the malls. Yeah. And some of the uh, some of the, the the Muslim world still build you know imposing structures of the masajid, but you know you come and in, uh, you come inside it and it's empty most of the time. Yeah. But in in Tarim, mm-hmm. you will find that you know the most uh, the prominent buildings are the masajid. And, and, and the places people gather for learning, mm. the ribbons. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that these are skyscrapers in the modern sense of the word, mm. but that means to say that the entire city, um, the, 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 the external reflects yeah. what these people find mm. uh, most important. So, so you will be able to enter into spaces, yes, in which, for example, some of the masjids, uh, uh, the masjid of Imam Al Haddad, for example, yeah. that has mm. been there for hundreds of years, yeah. uh, the masjid of Abdul Rahman Al Saqaf, mm. and you will be all, also have the opportunity to visit some of the the houses of these scholars. For example, the house of Imam Haddad. Mm-hmm. And uh, you will be shown the place where he used to tutor his best student, uh, Ahmad bin Zain al-Habshi. Mm-hmm. And this is just talking about the architecture yeah. that reflects a people uh, really concerned with learning. Yeah. Uh, but to really know the activity of learning mm-hmm. within a place, as Professor Alatas has uh, tried to point us in the uh, in his preliminary statement on a general theory of the Islamization of the Malay world, Prof. Alatas said that uh, with regards to the Malay world, if you want to know the, the, the level of activity and the Islamization aspect, you need to look at the manuscripts, he said. Mm. Uh, that is because, uh, particularly in the case of the Malay world, our architecture, you know, hundreds of years ago was based upon wood. They don't, they, they don't last that long. Yeah. Uh, and there are many instances where you disassemble a certain, uh, a certain building and then you reassemble or you know they, they become uh, victims of, of the weather yeah. but if you look uh, in this part of the world if you want to see the, 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 the level of activity of learning mm-hmm. or the the, 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 uh, the, the the role of Aceh or the role of Malacca mm-hmm. or the role of um, uh, Palembang as, mm-hmm. as centers of learning mm-hmm. you have to look at it in, in the manuscripts okay. so it, similarly if you look at the manuscript tradition the works being produced in Hadramaut the, the results will be even more staggering Okay. You will find, for example, that um, most of them, of course, uh, um, it, why it is uh, important for us to talk about these things, uh, about Tarim, is, is because it has a direct bearing upon the, uh, shall we say, suppose we say that the Malay 
identity mm-hmm. is is like a kain tenun, uh, like a kain songkit. Yeah. Yes, uh, in which you have the threads. Yes. A prominent thread that runs through this uh, kain songkit. Yes, this this cloth. Yes. Yeah. Is coming from uh, Hadramaut. Is coming from Tari because okay. most of the missionaries in the 15th, 16th, and the oh, 17th right. centuries came mm. from that region, mm. and they have a, a great bearing upon our understanding of Islam and our practice of Islam. Mm-hmm. That is we. That is why we persist in the madhab, uh, in the ahlu sunnah uh, aqidah. Yeah. That is why we persist in the in the madhab of uh, the Shafi'i. I see. And that is also why we uh, we put a singular importance uh, to the works of Imam Al Ghazali, in particular mm-hmm. the Ihya Ulumuddin, in the practice of tasawuf. These three aspects, this trilateral aspect of the practice of Islam in this part of the world, mm-hmm. is greatly influenced by Hadramaut. Okay. And furthermore, I have said in a in a previous episode about how the 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 the, the influence of the scholars of Hadramaut, in fact, can be gleaned in our own tradition. Mm. I said the greatest sheikh in in this part of the world, Nuruddin Ar Raniri himself, was uh, in in his line of learning was a student of uh, Sheikh Abdullah Basaudan, uh, who in his line of learning took from the Aidarus of Hadramaut, and Sheikh Abdul Samad Palimbang, yes, the great. Uh, scholar of the 19th century, one of the greatest scholars of the 19th century, um, uh, you know, copied from a lot of, uh, um, shall we say, cited the works of Imam Haddad, Sheikh Yusuf Makassar, the one responsible for the Islamization of Cape Town, yes, who was exiled from this part of the world, from Indonesia, mm-hmm. he himself was a direct student of Imam Haddad of, of Hadramaut. Mm. So without doubt that there is, uh, there is a, a semblance and close connection between this part of the world and Hadramaut. But if you look at the works being produce in the tradition of of uh, Hadramaut uh, they still claim that um Despite their imposing uh, influence in the in the scholarly world, they still claim that most of them did not really focus on writing works. Mm. Most of them were were concerned uh, foremost in writing human beings or producing human beings. Uh, you know the likes of Imam Habib Umar bin Abdul Rahman Al Attas, whose ratib is still being read today in parts of Johor, in in various parts in in KL, there are still majalis the ratib Al Attas which are still being read. What do you mean by human being? Okay, so this is what we say when you say to, to produce human beings, yeah. this is in direct relation to our topic, this unlocking human potentials. Okay. Yes, Habib Umar, the, the, just to give the example, Habib Umar bin Abdul Rahman al Attas, the, 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 the Sahib Ratib, was the direct teacher of Imam Haddad. Uh, once people said that, uh, you know, people started questioning or doubting the authority of this Umar bin Abdul Rahman al Attas. Uh, he said that he didn't produce any works, they said. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Imam Haddad said, we are amongst his works. Yes, Nahanumin mm-hmm. Anfasil Habib Umar bin Abdul Rahman al Atas, this Imam Haddad used to say. And this is because uh, their way of, of living mm-hmm. is such that it, the, the, the focus is, is internal. Uh, in the sense that they want to, uh, they, they treat as their most important organ, their hearts. Okay. Yes, not their, their physical bodies. So once they treat their, their, their most important organ as the heart, mm-hmm. so therefore they wish to remove from the heart any sicknesses. Okay. They want to, to remove from the heart any form of impurities. Okay. And they want to endow the heart. Uh, they want to beautify the hearts mm-hmm. with all the, 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 the good and the kindly um, attributes. Okay. So, these were the, 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 you know, behind that architecture, behind this uh, structure of institutions, behind this routine the, of the yearly, the monthly, the weekly uh, learning, mm-hmm. uh, how all this tradition became established yeah. in a sense that people can, you know, can just enter into it any, any time of the season and hope to, 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 to come out a better person. Mm-hmm. So if if they come with the proper niya, this was uh, this uh, this concert, shall we say, yeah. uh, happened as a result of these masters imposing these uh, these traditions, and the, the the later people took from them. I see. Uh, but of course, when we when we speak about this, uh, when we when we say that they are a people. Uh, who hold fast to tradition, we do not mean that they are not people who, who are open uh, to, who are open to changes also. Mm. Uh, this is because we know that, uh, for example, uh, when they find out that an author, a thinker, a scholar uh, whose works, you know, they may, came, they may come from outside the tradition of Tarim, mm-hmm. but if their work is, is truly, um, you know, worth uh, the, shall, shall, shall we say, of a, a, a certain caliber, they will adopt it and, and form as part of their tradition. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the most 
classic example of the, is the case of Imam al-Ghazali. Yeah. Uh, it was said that uh, one of their leaders, Abu Abdurrahman al-Saqqaf, he himself, being accomplished in, in, in scholarship, wanted to write a book uh, wherein you can combine, uh, you know, the, the finesse and the uh, acumen of fiqh, uh, jurisprudence, with the inward beauties of tasawuf. Mm -hmm. And then he was shown uh, the Ihya Ulumuddin. Okay. And when he seen the Ihya Ulumuddin, he said, this is the work that we wanted. And so instead, he, he chose not to write the work and uh, adopted mm. the Ihya Ulumuddin as a program. Yeah. Of course, they not only adopted and adapted, mm -hmm. they also wrote summaries and they, they extracted from it yeah. and they developed some of the ideas of the Ihya Ulumuddin. And this tradition also happened in this part of the world, yes. uh, the Malay world also. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, shall I say, in, in, in this regard, we have spoken about the, the, the intellectual tradition of, yeah. of, of the, the, the Habaib, the, inter, uh, the, you know, the, the, the scholarship centering around the, uh, the, the person. Another aspect that, that is key in this regard to, to highlight the, the role of um, the, the universities yeah. uh, and institution or the special feature of the Islamic institution yeah. is the, the special student and teacher relationship mm -hmm. and the, the the role of the ijaza mm -hmm. which meant a lot during those times you know to say is when there any a, difference with whatever we have today in the system well what has happened well, what has come to happen today in the uh, is the you know a student is considered educated mm -hmm. in the sense if you come from a, an institution isn't it yeah. that you come up with a degree that yeah. is a piece of paper a scroll that, that you, you you know you, you to recognize yes your, you carry to, yeah. that, that to recognize your achievements your yeah. scholastic achievements yeah. Uh, whether you have a bachelor's degree, a master's, or a PhD, but um, it does not say you know, on, on this uh, on these transcripts who are your teachers. Mm. Nor does it uh, say that you have uh, served the teacher, um, you know, uh, in a way that uh, that that reveals your character. Mm. There is nothing that reveals your your true character except for your grades. Yeah. But in the uh, in the Islamic intellectual tradition, the student-teacher relation is extremely important mm. because we know that the, the the source of learning in Islam is ultimately the Prophet sallallahu mm -hmm. alaihi wasallam, and so therefore the the, the stronger your your connection to him the more uh, aspect of being educated uh, you, you display because mm -hmm. uh, we know that ultimately the measure of being an educated man in Islam is the statement of the Prophet Adabani Rabbi Fa'ahsana Ta'adibi he said, my Lord educated me and what an excellent education did I receive mm -hmm. and then he would educate his Sahaba he also said that whoever you know, uh, the, 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 the Sahaba is attested in their generation and then the students of the Sahaba, the Tabi'in and then the Tabi'at Tabi'in mm -hmm. Um, but how do we ensure this continuity? Yes, and that's how the, the, the early scholars uh, devise this uh, ijazah uh, or sanat tradition. Yeah. And if you look amongst the peoples of the world, the Hazarim, the people of Hadramun are amongst those who are truly uh, concerned uh, to, to, to maintain this authenticity. Okay. And that is because they combine within themselves, at least they are, they are their masters, uh, uh, people who combine within themselves what we call today the silsila dhahabiyah, the golden chain. And how is it a golden chain? The golden chain is because it is not just a sanat based on teacher-student, but the teacher-student combines within his uh, their, their own sanat, the mm. sanat of father, uh, son to father, mm. or son to uncle, son to father to grandfather, like that. So basically, it is both the, 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 the sanat of, of uh, lineage and the sanat of learning. So therefore, they are Silsila, uh, you know, if you if you look at the charts, mm -hmm. you will see that every generation the 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 the, the, the scholars are uh, uh, accounted for like that. Okay. And uh, I think some of the um, uh, scholars who have written about this tradition uh, from within Hadramaut, uh, one of the best guides to to understanding what what they mean by their their interconnectedness to the Prophet is Habib Idrus uh, bin Umar al Habshi who wrote uh, the Ekdul Yawakit. In this work, you will find first uh, about 200 page introduction unto the meaning of the, the Ba'ala I see. Uh, he expounds the, 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 the principles, the core principle, fundamentals, and uh, their attitude towards life, their worldview expound, is expounded mm -hmm. there. But the second volume of the work is where he gathers together the, the sources of their uh, line. That mm -hmm. means to say what they have gathered in, in terms of their sanan. So not only do they have uh, 
general ijazah or general granting of license from from teacher to student yeah. uh, they also have the the the, the ijazah of uh, shall we say learning they also have the ijazah of something called the musafaha musafaha meaning to say in the sense of uh, in the sense of hand clasp or handshakes yes from teacher to student to teachers to, to student in a sense that it is unbroken up to the okay. prophet okay. and then there is the ijazah of uh, certain statements you know mm-hmm. like when the prophet muhammad told one of his companions in ni uhibbuka mm-hmm. i love you fala tada ba'da salatika do not leave after your prayer this uh, uh, after your salah this certain prayer mm-hmm. and so they have uh, kept jealously some of these some of these records and habib idrus bin umar al habshi in this work shows where are the lines through which they receive mm-hmm. Uh, some of these um, uh, these things. Mm-hmm. So basically, the the bond uh, the bond between the teacher and the student is something sacrosanct okay. in this regard. Does that mean that if they don't achieve certain standard by the teacher, they will not be given this ijazah? Just yeah. like grades in yeah, university? certainly, of course. I mean, uh, the, the the teachers work here. Yeah. Uh, you know, Habib Omar bin Hafiz has said that you you are you require not just a sheikh ta'lim in your life you 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 do not only require a teacher that teaches you knowledge okay but you know you need also a sheikh uh, who is a sheikh uh, tarbiyah meaning to say uh, the the one that educates your akhlaq yeah. uh, so basically the their teachers they function um, three in one in a sense first they give academic instructions meaning to say in certain books you know if you've read a book cover to cover yeah. understood it Uh, so you have an ijazah of that book. Okay. You have also the ijazah of, uh, for example, having attended, you know, general sessions, uh, ijazah am like that, just like for barakah. Of course. Yes. Mm-hmm. But the 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 one that that is worth the most is the, of course, the the attestation of your teacher after long companionship with him. Yeah. That he knows your character. That he has, you know, seen you, uh, you know, from all around, and you have mm-hmm. na- you have then developed yourself to 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 your best ability. Mm-hmm. And if then you identify yourself or people identify you as a student of so and so, especially after the license granted by your teacher, you are in a sense a true representative of that teacher. Okay. So that is why the, the 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 religion becomes protected in that sense. Mm-hmm. Compared to our times, for example, yeah. uh, when when you know when you no longer know where where people gain their knowledge, it mm-hmm. is possible, for example, that someone's chain may end up in just the third teacher, yeah. or perhaps somebody just gain. He's learning just from the internet, you know what you know. This uh, so-called autodidacts. Mm. That alone is not necessarily problematic. Supposing you, um, you know, you study. Uh, and Allah guides you mm-hmm. uh, to to arrive at the right statements. It's still possible, at least. Yeah. But the real problem comes about when. Uh, Uh, you know you study but you do not study properly yeah. in the sense that you end up attacking the early masters of the tradition yes. or you display a sort of arrogance or you sp- you you display a sort of characteristics mm. in which this is contrary to the the uh, to the ways of the people of the past okay. so that's why they they devise this ijazah system in order to uh, you know it's 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 quality control in mm-hmm. that in that sense this system has been used for a long time yes. and it's still yes used. it is still in in in, in operation in okay. that sense how does it face up the challenges of modernity today okay so then yes i mean people of of tarim themselves do they actually travel like people today would look out for structure you mean yes. uh, facilities for example yeah Yes, you're right. Um, what I have come to notice first, in even in the work of Habib Idrus, uh, Idrus bin Omar al Habshi, and this was written say about 150 years ago. Mm-hmm. In that work, he was complaining about uh, uh, and warning rather uh, about the tendency of some of the, the the youth of Tarim to go into this part of the world. Yes, okay. the Bilad al Jawi. Yes, the the Bilad al Jawi is basically the Malay world. Okay. Uh, he used to say that uh, coming to this part of the world can be temptation uh, can can be a source of temptation okay. because uh, you know this is this is the part of the world where most of the trade happened mm. and uh, you know whereas in in tarim they live quite austerely you know until today yeah. they, they live um, you know in 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 the sense that truly re- truly reflects that they are the people of akhirah not in this uh, not the people of the world all this can google the pictures <laughs> yes. you see yeah? okay. of course yes uh, but uh, you know 
but when they uh, but he want not to come to this part of the world as mm. as youth he said okay uh, but but they they did feel uh, you know tarim did feel a, son, a sense of responsibility for the world as a whole otherwise they wouldn't have dispatched missions to the, to islamize yeah. this part of the world and they were you know they were extending their frontiers over generations you know look at how the many islands there are in this part of the world mm-hmm. and look at how far they have progressed you know they got they got as far as the southern philippines mm-hmm. yeah. uh, the um, uh, borneo they've gotten even to the to the extent that there are some reports of uh, you know as far as far uh, as far south as uh, some of the islands close to australia mm. so if supposing uh, they were granted uh, maybe a hundred more years uh, you know if the, the imperialistic and the colonialistic forces yeah. did not come mm. who knows the entire uh, continent of australia might have been islamized and be part of this uh, yeah. you know uh, this world yeah. and furthermore the yeah, their islamization mission went into uh, uh, you know parts of uh, kenya africa mm. and the idea the islamization of kenya Uh, in recent times uh, was just accomplished you know uh, just about 40 50 years ago by this mm-hmm. Habib Ahmad al-Mashhur you know who whom under his hands uh, close to 300,000 people converted to Islam mm-hmm. so but how is it that they can prepare themselves yeah. for the world and in our times also you know despite what, what whatever is happening in modernity you will see some of the representatives of the school mm-hmm. uh, you know still making dawah in Europe you know they came to Uh, you know they came to to Cambridge there there's a cent- there, there is a the uh, a center in Sweden in in uh, what is called the Rauda Institute okay uh, in Gothenburg <laughs> you know they, and 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 they they have students in in the United States in various parts of the world so mm-hmm. basically they are still radiating knowledge to the world yeah of course uh knowing uh, however that the challenge of modernity is not uh, is not uh, is not merely external but it is also epistemological in the sense that it is uh, intellectual in nature yeah. uh, they have produced some scholars who have thought about uh, you know the, they have their own mufakkirin they have their own thinkers okay. who are thinking about the problems that come with modernity they know that uh, you know modernity is not just science and technology they know that modernity is not just the introduction of hospitals mm. uh, introduction of uh, shall we say uh, vehicles they know that for example that with modernity comes a certain outlook about the world they know about the challenges of secularization mm. they know about the challenges of uh, liberalism yeah. and the chief exponent in our times i think is this habib abu bakar uh, al mashhur uh, of aden Yes, mm-hmm. uh, and he has written a, a few works uh, about the the the, the, the concepts uh, that 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 you know that that derive from uh, from the West uh, in a sense that is problematic, and he has proposed solutions to this. Mm. Pro- uh, of course, it, it remains for them uh, to 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 read the works of uh, Professor Nakib Alatas, uh, because I think in in uh, you know Professor Nakib Alatas himself being of the descendants of the Baalawi, but raised in this part of the world, okay. and um, you know having. Uh, a, 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 the real depth uh, understanding of modernity and its problems yeah. uh, surely the reading of his works will also you know improve the understanding of modernity in that sense mm-hmm, inshallah okay maybe as a conclusion our topic unlocking human potential perhaps you want to give uh, any conclusion that we can learn from the city in our own context and in this topic inshallah of course uh, when we look at a city like that um, I'm, you know, if you look at some of the the, the, the thinkers, they, they they will know that uh, any good examples, mm-hmm. uh, when you want to apply it to your city, you have to look at the capacities and the potentials of your of your own city. You need to, you need you cannot you know do it without some some measure of creativity, okay. and you cannot do it without some measure of understanding the present and local context. Yes. Fortunately, our local context already has strong roots mm. in in the intellectual tradition. So one of the things that needs to happen for for our local communities that we can learn there yeah. is um, um, is returning the role of of uh, shall we say uh, the role of Uh, religion in 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 the society. Yes. Uh, but in order for that to happen, uh, the people who represent religion mm-hmm. must be able to engage with modernity. Must be able to engage with the problems uh, affecting yeah. and afflicting society. Yeah. They must not limit themselves to just uh, focusing about the nitty gritties of things. Yeah. They must not limit themselves, of course, to to just wrangling among themselves to unravel problems that has already been settled. Yes. But instead, focus truly and one one of the chief lessons that they can learn from the city.
Universiti of Tarim yes. they must focus truly on the moral development mm-hmm. of of the people mm-hmm. and that i think is the the real uh the real function of of scholars yes to 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 educate the community yes. and educating the community uh, can only happen as imam al ghazali has said uh, under the hands of scholars of the akhirah mm-hmm. not the scholars who use their knowledge for the sake of this world Inshallah, uh, as you said that we already have the roots probably we just need to improvise or improve and inshallah we hope that um, we have shared a lot during this eighth episode of Unlocking Him of Potential with Mr. Said Wade and Alatas we want to thank you very much inshallah in the future episodes we will come back to you for more uh, topics inshallah till then thank you very much assalamualaikum wa alaikum salam